Hello, welcome back to the channel. I am back by popular demand and requests, and it's with a cracker of a video. If you haven't followed me on Instagram and all the other social media, please give me a follow at Cruel FC Vlogs on Twitter, Instagram, and obviously YouTube. So, on my Instagram a couple of days ago, which was probably Sunday, I asked all my followers what should I do for a video and one of them was to do like a profile about Crawley Town so you request I receive and that's what we're doing today so let's crack on so how were Crawley founded Crawley Town were founded in 1896 helped to f help to found the West Sussex League the club was just this band in 1935 but were re-established into Brighton and Hove District League three years later. The club fully turned professional in 2015 but faced financial difficulties and administration. The club survived and appointed Steve Evans as manager in 2007. He's now gone to Stevenage. Crawley spent three years in League One before being relegated back into League Two in 2015. So a bit about the stadium. Crawley spent 48 years at the Town Mead until sold to developers. They then moved to the Broadford Stadium uh, and between 2013 and 2018 the stadium was called the Checker Trade Stadium as part of a sponsorship deal. It was then called the People's Pension Stadium for two to three years but due to name rights it's now back to the Broadford Stadium. It has a capacity of 5,996 their record attendance is 5,880 on January the 5th, 2013, when we hosted Reading in the FA Cup. So, a bit about the rivalries. Crawley's biggest rivalries by so far is Wimbledon, according to Survey 2012, with Brighton and Swindon and Sin as the third and second rivals, also due to proximity with South London side Sutton has become the club's most recent one following a crowd trouble after a tie in 2021 which saw a late to Sutton goal to win the game. So, a bit about the honours, there's not that many, I apologise, but in League 2 we got promoted 2011-2012. Uh, the conference, which was level 5, so that is National League, we, got, uh, we were promoted. And then the Southern League, which is probably National League South, which is Worthing's League, we got promoted. So, a bit about all-time appearance makers. In first is Cliff Kahn with 452. In second place is Danny Borman, which I've seen before, 449 appearances. Alan Lester with 438, he takes third place. Fourth is Tony Vesey with 434. Then we head down to 7th with uh, the cat, Glenn Morris, with 269 appearances. And a familiar face, num uh, 11th place, Lewis Young, with 246. All-time goal scorers, however, first, Terry Robbins, with 89. To be honest, that's not that many when you think about it, compared to other great players. Second is Craig Whittington, with 82. Three is Brian Gregory, 76. Fourth is Cliff Kahn with 69. And five is Matt Tubbs. We head down to 24, which Ashley Addison has scored 31 since he has joined, but he's gone to Gillingham. And also a familiar face, Tom Nichols. He takes the 29th place with 29 goals. So, a bit about this season so far. Top goal scorer is Danilo Orsi with 15 goals in all competitions. Second is Adam Campbell with six. And third is Clyde Lolos with, hang on, I don't think that's right. I think Campbell's got eight and Clyde Lolos has got six. However, on the most yellow cards, Jay Williams with 10. Particularly, I don't like Jay Williams. The season's most appearances, however, is Will Wright with 28 Closely followed by Nick Cerula with 27. Now I've done, so that's all of the history and honours. Uh, back going to this season, however, I've rated the Crawley Town players. It does not include loan players that have gone back to their parent clubs. So, Corey Adai, the keeper, I've ranked him 6.5 out of 10. 
He had a great start to the season, however lacked confidence probably around November time. We saw a backup keeper, Luke Ashby Hammond, uh, playing goal, which I think then helped Corey get back up to standard. Luke has now gone back to Fulham, but then has been loaned out to Notts County. Next we have Will Wright, who is a defender. I've given him a 7 out of 10. He's a strong, uh, he's a real character to him. So I've given him 7. He scored 3 goals. As well as they've all been great goals against Bradford, a free kick against Gillingham, and a goal against Swindon, I think. I will double check. Um, give me two secs. Uh, results. Not in Swindon. Wasn't the Swindon game. It must have been maybe... Recently, when was it then? Wimbledon, that was it. He scored a goal against Wimbledon. However, away from all the goals, next we go to Dylan Conroy. Another defender, giving him a 4.5 out of 10. He had an injury uh, midway through, not midway through, like last year in November time, which I didn't think helped him. So I'll give him a 4.5 out of 10. Then we go to Jay Williams. Even though I personally don't think he should be starting, I've still got him a 5.5 out of 10. He's like He's strong, but he's too strong and gives away fouls, yellow cards. He argues a lot. He's very sloppy, especially in the defensive third. He tried to do a pass to the keeper, Corey, the other day against Salford, but managed to give them the other. He managed to give Salford the ball, and they went on and scored. Next, we have Harry Ransom, uh, five out of ten. He's a young defender. He obviously needs time in League Two, and at Crawley, whether he will go and loan somewhere, but I still think he's a good player for Crawley. Then we have Lawrence Maguire, who's also another defender. I give him a seven point five out of ten because he is he plays the game like a proper League Two player, which I thought he wouldn't be able to do since coming through Chesterfield. So that's Lawrence Maguire. Toby Amole, again with 2 out of 10. We haven't really seen much of him. He's played in the Bristol Street Motors Trophy a couple of times, but I haven't seen enough of him to give him a higher score. Joy McKenna, I gave him a 3 out of 10. He's better than Amole because he uh, to uh, Joy played in a league, started his first league game probably against... Swindon, which I thought he was excellent in across the back line. So I've given him a three. Uh, next is Nick Sarula. I've given him eight out of ten. He's been excellent over, but especially the past couple of games, he's lacked a bit, which I um, haven't really been enjoying. So, but at the start of the season, he was brilliant. He was just putting in shots everywhere. You know, skill. Um, next, we have Travis Johnson. The thing with Travis is that. Um, he hasn't really had enough time, I don't think, to play. He played some games last season, but the season I've put him so far as a 4 out of 10. Then we go to Kellen Gordon. There's a thing with Kellen Gordon at the moment that I, since he had an injury back at the end of last season, I think he had a shoulder injury. I think he dislocated it, which... He was an excellent player last season, so he helped us a lot, but he's definitely lacked um, skill, confidence, effort. He's not been the best, so I'm going to 5.5 out of 10. Ronan Darcy, the white Pele. Um, I like Darcy, but I think every player's lacked recently. 
don't know what it is, maybe it's the weather, but he will, I would have given him an 8 out of 10, maybe at the start of the season, but he's, uh, for me he's a 6 out of 10. Next go to Liam Kelly, I like Kelly, he's probably what, 5 foot 6, he's very small for a player, but he's brilliant, he, um, I've given him 8.5 as I said, he's just so good in that midfield, he holds the ball, great passes, attacks, so that's Kelly, off to Ben Gladwin, I've got him a 6 out of 10, just because he's had a knee problem over the past year, um, which has probably got worse, he's had surgery on it, but I don't think he's been the best. Uh, then we go to Jack Rolls, he's been brilliant the past three months, especially in well all competitions really. In the Bristol Street Motors, he's got three goals and he got player of the round. And he's got two goals in League 2, which when this were cracking goals. Um, one against Gillingham and one against Swindon, which I thought he played brilliantly. So I'm going to 7.5 out of 10. Rafiq Khalil, I've given a 3 out of 10. Haven't seen enough. Um, he's probably come on a couple of times because I can't remember. He's played in the Bristol Street Motors Trophy, um, but haven't seen enough. Harry Forster. Uh, I've given a 5.5 out of 10. Come through the Bromley, uh, National League side Bromley. He's good, but as I say, I haven't seen enough, but I've seen him play to give him a rating, but not enough to give him a higher rating. Next we go to Danilo Orsi. Obviously, I've given a 9.5 out of 10. A goal scorer, if an attacker scores goals, then you've got no problem with them. Danilo Orsi is probably the best player, best signing last in the summer transfer window. He says he got 15 goals in all competitions. What do you expect from a football uh, attacker to score goals? Then it's Clyde Lolos. I've given him an 8 out of 10 just because he's, my mum calls him Twinkle Toes. Um, he's literally just so fast when he comes on. He kills all the defenders. Not really, but you know what I mean. He's just he's scored a couple of goals. He's scored a couple of late goals. In it was against Grimsby. Um, yeah, he scored a goal against. Was it Grimsby? No, it can't have been Grimsby. It was. He scored against Harrogate, and he scored against. When was it? It must have been against. Yes, it was against Tranmere early on in the season. So I've given him an 8 out of 10. 28, uh, next, no, sorry, next I've given uh, 7.5 to Adam Campbell. He's small, he's from Gateshead. Um, he scores goals, but he's sort of slowed down the past couple of games. Whether the manager said something to him, but I haven't been impressed recently. 20 to, uh, next is Adi Adi Amo. I shall slow that down. Addy, Addy, Yamo. I'll give him a 6 out of 10. Towards the start of the season, never saw anything from through to injury. But over since December, he's been coming on attack, attack, attack. Um, but he's got a 6 out of 10. And that's about it. Um... My next video, I'm probably going to do a match day routine because I seem to record videos, but like I don't do all of the, all the stuff that I do. Um, so I'm going to try against the game against Morecambe, third of February. I will try and do a match day routine. Thanks for watching.